Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Microsoft Excel. This screencast gives you some advice on judging if your data is normally distributed and includes section 8.4, how to check whether your data have a normal distribution using the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If your data is normally distributed, then you can use a set of tests called parametric tests that are more powerful in discriminating significant from non-significant results. This is because the equation expects your data to conform to a pattern called the Gaussian or normal distribution and so can make more accurate predictions. Thus, researchers often like to do tests to determine if the data is normal and we will outline some in this screencast. But please note that absolute justification that a small data set is normally distributed is almost impossible to do. One common approach can be illustrated using the data from table 8.3 shown in the bar chart. We can calculate a mean and standard deviation from this data and then predict the distribution of values we should get if the data is normal, as we can see from the underlaid bar chart in pink. We can then perform a chi-squared or similar test to see if our values are consistent with those expected values. This generates a probability and if it is below 0.05, we can state the observed and expected data are significantly different and that our data is not normal. How to do this chi-squared test is detailed in the book, however, many programs have several other tests to determine if your distribution could be normal, and in this screencast we will outline the use of the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is the most accurate test for small sample sizes. Again, a significant result indicates that your data is not normally distributed. This is an important consideration with these tests. They tell you if your data is not normal. What they do not do is tell you that your data is normal. What if the p-value was just above 0.05? The result would be non-significant, but could we really state the data was normally distributed with any certainty? Fortunately, there are a couple of other indicators we can assess. Normal data sets are symmetrical, so we can look at the skew value, which should be zero for a perfectly symmetrical data set. This is also why we find the mean and median are the same in normally distributed data. In general, a skew value between minus two and two can be consistent with a normal distribution. We can also calculate a kurtosis value. In a normally distributed data set, the data tails off from the central position in a defined way. The kurtosis value can indicate if your data tails off too quickly or slowly. A kurtosis value between minus two and two can be consistent with a normally distributed data set. Using these three measures, we can at least give some justification for using a parametric test to analyze our data with even if we cannot state with absolute certainty that our data set is normally distributed. I have entered the data from table 5.8 into Excel. This data consists of body lengths of 50 ladybirds of the species Adala bipunctata. The question is whether the data can be considered normally distributed. Unfortunately, the Excel data pack will not do the Shapiro-Wilk test, but you could follow the web walkthroughs to do the chi-squared comparison. However, the Excel data pack will do kurtosis, skewness, mean and median. To do the test, we track up to data, across the data pack, and a window opens. We track down to descriptive statistics and press OK. The test output window opens. First, we have to tell Excel the location of the data we wanted to analyse. To do that, I click on the selection button which appears to the right hand of the input range box. A selection window opens. I now select all of my data. I go back up to the selection window and press the right hand button to enter the data. Since I included the label in my selection, I now tick the label in first row box. I now need to decide where I want the data to be placed. I want it placed on this worksheet, so I'm going to press the output range radio button. I now press the selection button to the right of the output range box and I'm going to click in column C1, which is where the top left-hand corner of my data will appear. I track back up to the selection window and click the button on the right to enter my data. I now press OK. As we can see, Excel has given a kurtosis value of approximately minus 0.294. This value is close to zero and within our minus two to two guide range, suggesting that the data tails off appropriately. The skewness value is approximately minus 0.05. This value is even closer to zero and also within our minus two to two guide range and suggests the data is relatively symmetrical. Something confirmed by the mean and median values being similar at 5.08 and 5.00 respectively. 
these descriptive statistics values are consistent with a normal distribution, although I would be far from confident in stating that my data was normally distributed. The next step in Excel I think would be to draw a graph to look at the shape of the data. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.